let's solve tuning trouble which is day 6 of advent of code 2022. Hey everyone, this is Keystrokes. I'm a senior software engineer at one of the fangs and I like to solve lead code problems and programming puzzles like advent of code. Today we are taking a look at day 6 of advent of code which is called tuning trouble and looks like our preparations are finally complete and we are ready to leave the camp on foot and make our way to the star fruit grove. And elves give us a handle device which is used for communication and they gave us a faulty device because they think we have a lot of experience dealing with signal based systems. And the moment they gave us the device, it started to emit a few colorful sparks, which doesn't sound too good. So it looks like to be able to communicate with the elves, we need to lock on to their signal. And the signal is basically a series of random characters that the device receives one at a time. And we need to determine the start of packet marker in the data stream that comes in. And looks like that's indicated by a sequence of four characters, which are all different. So let's take a look at the example. So this is the data stream that we get. And looking at the first four characters, we see that J is repeated twice. Now, when the next character arrives, which is P, we see that J is still repeated. So this cannot be our marker. Now, when we receive Q, we see that Q is repeated. So this again cannot be the start of packet marker. And then we get M, which then actually makes this a set of unique characters, which is four in length. Now M is the seventh character. So we had one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's what they say here. The first time a marker appears is after the seventh character arrives. So in our program, we need to report the value seven because that's the first start of packet marker, which gets complete after the seventh character has been processed. So that's the problem. And we basically need to output how many characters that we need to process before the first start of packet marker is detected. So let's copy this example and go to our IDE. I have day six here set up with the input and solution. So putting that in our input file and here in solution.js, we use FS to read the input file and we convert it to a string. And then we have a solve method which gets invoked here. And in here right now, we are logging the buffer that we read from our input file. So let's run this program and see if we get our buffer as the output. And yes, that's our buffer, which is basically the data stream as well. So for this problem, we can use a sliding window approach where we can have a start and an end marker. And as new characters come in from the data stream, we'll check if there are four unique characters in there. And we can shrink or increase the size of our window based on how the characters repeat. So the first thing we should do is split our buffer into individual characters. And we can do that using split function so let's store that in split buffer and we can simply do buffer dot split and we'll split on nothing and give you individual characters. So if we console log this, we can see we have individual characters now. Then let's define two more variables. Let's say start, which is the start marker. And then we have end, which is the end marker of our sliding window. Next, let's define a map. I'll just call it map, which will store the last position where we saw a character and let's initialize it with the zeroth character that we have. So we can do map and accessing the first character, which is in split buffer. And we can use start or zero and saying that it's at the zeroth index. And we can actually write this as start as well. Okay, let's start running our loop. We'll run the loop until we have reached the end of the buffer. So doing n smaller than split buffer dot length. And let's add a base case first. So let's measure the length of our sliding window, which will be n minus start plus one. And if this is equal to four characters, then this is the output that we need. So we can simply break a loop from here and use start and n as the window, which will be our output. Otherwise, we'll extend our window by one by increasing its n by one, and then we'll pick the current character, which is at the new end of the window. So we can store that in current care and access it by split buffer and then n. And let me copy this just so that we can do some dry runs as you write the program. So initially, our start and end, they both were over here. So let's say this is the start variable. I'm offsetting this a little. And this is the end variable, which tracks the end of our window. So they start here and the length is basically one in this case, because we only have one character. Then we move our end by one. And let me create map as well. Our map right now has M at zero position. So writing this as map. Okay, 
So our n moved by one. Now our length becomes two because now we are tracking m and j and our current character becomes j. Now the first thing we'll check is if we already have this character in our map. So we can do if the map already has the current character, if it is greater than equal to zero. In this case, it doesn't. So let's skip this part for now. If it's not there, then we'll simply put it in our map. So we can do map the current character that we have and we'll store the last time we saw this character, which will be end. So basically we are saying we have seen J at position one. Now the loop gets run again n minus start plus one is still two. So nothing changes there n plus one. So this moves further. Our length now becomes three, which is basically n minus start plus one in case that wasn't clear. And now our current character is Q, which is still not in the map. So we'll just add it to our map. So doing Q as two. Now going back again, starting a loop again, our length is still not four, it's three. So moving this further, now our current character becomes J. And this time we actually do see an entry in the map at position one. We see that we have seen J here. So now we need to readjust the start of our window to be right after this J. So basically move our start position over here, which will be right after J. So that our window then becomes Q and J, as then that's the distinct set of characters in the window that we can have for the last four characters. So to do that, the first thing we'll do is record the new start position. So that could be stored in new start. And the position will be the last time we have seen this repeated character, which will be in the map. And then we just go one index forward. And then the next thing we need to do is purge everything between the old start and right before the new start from our map. So that our map only contains the distant characters we have seen so far in our four character window. So for that, we can do a while loop. So doing while start is smaller than new start. And we can simply reassign the character that we are working with, which will be in split buffer and start. And we can assign it as minus one as a way of saying that we haven't seen it. So, so split buffer minus one will first point at M. So our M becomes minus one and then we'll move our start by one. So start basically moves to J and J is still smaller than new start because new start is at this index, which is two. And then J gets marked as minus one as well. And now start moves over here, which is where we want our final start position to be and which is now equal to new start. So this loop ends and then we come out of this if statement and then we record the latest position of J that we know which is end in this case, which will be zero, one, two, and then three. So continuing with our loop now, our length actually becomes two. And for ease, I'll just put the index here. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it becomes three minus two plus one, which becomes two now. So it still doesn't meet this condition. Then our end gets incremented by one. And now our current character becomes P. Now we have not seen P in our map. So we just put this in our map. So now we have P as four. Now the length becomes four minus two, which is two plus one and three. And then we increment our end again. This time we encounter Q. Now Q is actually in our map again. So our new start becomes the last index of Q plus one, which will be right here. So purging everything right before this new start. And after the start, we only have one character, which is Q. And we can set this as minus one and we increment start by one. Now start matches with the new start, so we can remove this marker. So now we have start and new start, which is five minus three, which is still three. Okay, and then we update our map to have the current character as the end. Our current character was Q, and we update this as five. Looks like last time when we worked on J, we forgot to update this. This J should be three. Okay, so continuing with this, we increment end by one again, and now we encounter M. M is not in our map anywhere. We have it as minus one, which we treat as not being in the map. So we put M in here for the position as six. Now N minus start plus one becomes four. So this satisfies our if condition here and we break out of this loop. And in the end, N is actually six. So all we need to do right now here is return N plus one because our indexing started from zero, whereas the else they have one base indexing. So let's run this program and see if this gives us the right output. I did not console log anything here. So I'll add a console.log when calling our solve method. 
So running this again, we see seven is the answer, which is what we expected. And it matches seven that we saw here. So let's get the puzzle input and see if it works for this input. So going to input again and pasting whatever we copied and let's run this. We get this nice answer. Let's put this in advent of code. And that was the right answer. So now we have one gold star closer to collecting enough star fruit. So going back to part two now. Now there's a very small tweak to this problem. Looks like now we need to find start of message marker, which is like the start of packet marker, except it consists of 14 distinct characters rather than four. So let's see how we can do it. So undoing this to the example input we had. And the only place where we put four here is over here. I think if we make this a variable, then it will work. So taking this as the input, let's say we call it distinct characters needed. And we make this as distinct characters instead of hard coding as four. So passing four to it. And for our second part, we can pass 14. So let's run this again. We got seven, which was for the example input. Now we have 19 for the example output for part two. Let's see if that's the right answer, which matches what advent of code tells us. So now let's run it for the actual input that we have. And running this program, we see the same output from before. And for part two, we have this. Let's submit this here. And yes, that works. And we solve this problem as well. This is very similar to a lead code problem that I've solved in the past. If you need a more thorough drawn out explanation, how this algorithm works, you should see a card on the video right now. And I'll add a link in the description as well. Well, that concludes day six of advent of code. And we got two more stars. If this video helped you, please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to my channel and show me your support by buying me some coffee. And please don't forget to check out my Patreon that I recently launched, which has early supporter benefits like one-on-ones with me, getting career advice and solving more problems like this and to help me shape the direction of the channel. We'll be solving more problems in the coming days. So I'll see you next time.